and welcome to week two of The More of You Know. Um, as you may remember, my name is Emily Waddell, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I work in the office of the Dean of the Ingram Commons. And with me, I have some incredible humans. I cannot wait for you to meet them. So without further ado, I'm going to ask each of you to tell me your name, your pronouns, your role in your office, and a place in Nashville you think students need to check out once they get here. So why don't you go ahead? Very great. Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Major. I am the assistant director and assistant chaplain in the Center for Spiritual and Religious Life. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his, and <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, my pronouns are he. My pronouns are he, him, his, and one of the places I think that you need to check out in Nashville is the African American Music Museum. I think it is one of the gems in Nashville. Um, I would say give yourself hours to check it out because there's so much to see, but that is definitely a place that you need to visit when you get there. You are not the first person to recommend it, so I know I have to go. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't. Go. So I know. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't breaking with you. Yeah, that's, I'll tell you what my laugh is when you see my response. That's what is in my head. So I just <laughs> Uh, my name is Franklin Ellis, and I serve as the Director for Intercultural Education and Outreach with the Vice Chancellor's Office for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Long title. Yes. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his, and I'd say one place that you should go is, I can't tell you because I'm old and I don't leave my house when I get home. <laughs> is that fucking you laugh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't leave the house. You're An welcome. important lesson of self-care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. What a good refrain. Yeah, <laughs> what about you? Hey, I'm Bailey Bai. I use she, her, or they, them pronouns. I'm the assistant director at the Margaret Cunningham Women's Center here at Vanderbilt. And let's see, I think if you like to do anything outdoors, um, Shelby Park, particularly the Fort Quinoa Air Park is really nice, and it's nice to be like to walk or have a dog or whatever, go hang out over there, you like to skate, whatever, that kind of thing, bike, um, just a fun place to be outside. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Steph Mankey, the director of the Peace and Potter Center, uh, which is the office of LGBTQIA. Uh, she or hers uh, pronouns and uh, Nashville. So I'm new to Nashville. I don't know if I can weigh on this, weigh in on this uh, really well, but I'm gonna go with food this time. Mm. So Sunda is a great restaurant. Mm. It's Asian fusion, uh, best Filipino food in mm. Nashville, I think. Wow. And what'd you say it was called? I'm not sure. Sunda. Okay. Yeah. I've never been there. I'm gonna have to definitely check that out. <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rashard Peel. I use he and his pronouns. I am the assistant director in the Bishop Joseph Johnson Black Cultural Center. Uh, in my role, I work uh, primarily on a lot of the background things for our programs and events uh, in the Black Cultural Center. Um, for me, the things that I would say to check out, uh, well, there's a place called Penn's Mechanical. It's a neighborhood called The Gulch, and it's really fun. Uh, bowling, outdoor games, just a cool place to kick it and hang out with friends. Um, yeah, it's just a really cool spot. That's so. awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you all for taking time out of your very busy days to be a part of this. Um, so let's just talk briefly about your office or your role here at Vanderbilt. Um, what does your team do and then why would I, as a first year student, come visit? Um, and if you don't, even if I don't hold the identity, you know, that your office serves, maybe if you all can think of what are some reasons I may want to stop by or come to y'all's event. Sure, I'll start. Um, we briefly describe our office. I would say one of the things we are, so we're religious life and spiritual life, and I think everybody has their own connotation when they think about that. Um, I think one of the things that we do best is that we serve a non-sectarian community. You know what I mean? So we are pluralistic in nature. So wherever you find yourself falling on the line of faith, falling on the line of belief, we have a space for you. So what we do is we hold, we are the community that allows you to engage faith and what that looks like for you. Um, are you heavily religious? We have a space for you. Are you searching? We have a space for you. Um, if you are a first-year student, why would you come here? I think um, what we do is we have space for all faiths, right? So if you find yourself as um, somebody who's committed to your faith, I think we have a space for you. We hold um, space for Muslim students. We hold space for Christian students. We hold space for different denominational students. Any, any, anywhere you see fit, um, we have a space for you, and we can hold space um, and connect you to the right people. You know what I mean? I think this campus has a wide range of faith communities, and wherever you find yourself, I think we have something for you. Awesome. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, you're a little different, but uh, yeah, why yes. would a first-year student maybe interact with you? Yeah, <laughs> um, so slightly different. Uh, my office is responsible for building community around identities that do not have a center itself. Mm -hmm. right? And so, and that's also connecting that community. It's not just students, but it's faculty and staff. So that would be getting involved in any of the identity initiatives. 
So that would be first uh, Network First Gen, which is to support students who identify as being uh, first-generation college students. Uh, we partner with First VU, which is a student-led organization. There's Persist VU, which we partner with Westbridge, mm -hmm. for people who identify as being low, lower income or who have experience being low or lower income. Military VU, for people who are active military, <laughs> reserves, or um, vets. Uh, there is, there's so many of them. Yeah. Um, indigenous VU, for people who identify as being part of the indigenous native um, population. We have our AAPI Identity Initiative, as well as Somos VU, and so that's for anybody who identifies as Latinx or Hispanic. Um, and Global VU, which supports anyone who identifies as being international. So we have um, mixtures that we do each semester just to bring together our community and for you to find support um, the people who have shared identity. Incredible. Awesome. So from the Women's Center, we have kind of our tagline is celebrating women, empowering all. So even though we're a Women's Center, we do serve everybody on campus, like all constituents, and we welcome everyone from undergrads to grad students to staff, faculty, and even alumni. Um, but specifically for our undergrad students, we have three different undergraduate internships that we run. We have the Baby Sex Ed Internship, the Body Project Internship, and then the Women's Center Ambassadors Program. Um, so we welcome our first-year students. This actually will be the first year that we are opening those internships up to first-year students. So we would love for y'all to be able to learn more about those and get involved if you want. Um, we also have a lot of unique resources out of our office that are free to everybody. So those include free menstrual products, um, pads and tampons, free safer sex supplies, so condoms, dental dams, and lube, and then free period, or excuse me, free pregnancy tests as well. Um, so we definitely want to get the word out about those resources to all first-year students as well, um, and we love for y'all to get involved. So the Office of LGBT Goliath Life, uh, we offer uh, educational, social, and wellness resources for anybody in the LGBT Goliath Plus community uh, and their allies. Um, and so educational could be anything from just exploring gender and sexuality um, and those sort of histories that involve with that too. And um, social could be things like very private groups, like those at queer intersections of like queer and Asian, queer and black, queer and different ability. Uh, we have private spaces for folks to meet each other and support each other in those spaces, but also uh, wider spaces for the community to get to mix and mingle with the LGBTQI plus community and see how they can support. Um, and then wellness, uh, that can be more, uh, we're pushing towards more holistic wellness. So we're looking at counseling, we offer counseling. Uh, and then also we give, um, we refer people out to like the UMC or the program for LGBT health. Um, so anything from medical to even spiritual resources for the LGBTQI plus community. Um, and in terms of why should a first year student visit or, or anybody who even doesn't identify in the community, um, I'll say two things. I, I think the first one is, um, you know, one of the great things about coming to university is you can really up your, your civic education, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're all learning how to be better humans for other humans. Uh, and we offer workshops and trainings on how to be better allies. Um, so even if you're within the LGBT community, you know, just because I identify as a lesbian doesn't mean I'm an ally or I know how to be an ally to somebody who's intersex mm -hmm. or trans. Mm -hmm. um, so we offer all those trainings. Um, and then the second reason uh, is I think, you know, we're all on this journey for exploring our gender and sex. Everybody is, and so we provide a sort of devoted space uh, to explore that in more nuanced ways. Um, so even if it just reaffirms that you're cis in your head, it, that's fine too. Yeah. But just being able to look at what gender means to you and what your sexuality mm -hmm. is to you um, is, I think, an opportunity that our office really wants to provide. For folks. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So the Black Cultural Center um, does very similar to Women's Center and LGBTQI Plus Center. Um, just that holistic experience, particularly for Black and African American students. Mm -hmm. um, and so we all we do offer like social, emotional, and uh, wellness programs and events. Um, but to me, what makes a, what makes our uh, space unique and what makes us stand out, the physical space, the physical building, has so much history. Uh, it's it's literally like a museum in and of itself for Black history. And so if you're interested, if you want to just learn more or just see that, just see those kind of his, historical things, um, our space is a great place to do that. In addition, our space also recently we just added on um, our front courtyard, and so we're going to open that, have that space open for events and programs. So you may see, uh, you know, you may see Greek life doing step shows in front of our building, or or folks having just outdoor picnics. Um, some of these offices probably will be using mm -hmm. our space for various events that are outdoor in our courtyard. So, so that physical space is really something that I think um, we, we love to just build community. We love to just have people in our space and, and build those connections. And so that's open to anybody. Um, 
And then the other thing that's also unique about our space is we, we partner with a lot of great resources on campus. So uh, this past year, uh, we had we hosted over 200 hours of tutoring uh, for STEM and 200 hours of writing studio time in our space. Um, and so we, we recognize that sometimes, you know, going over to tutoring services could be either far or it could just be a less comfortable space than, mm -hmm. than, some, than a space like ours. So, so uh, we, we host tutoring hours in our space. We host a um, weekly yoga class for the entire school year. Wow. So every every Thursday, there's yoga in our space. Um, and then we also host uh, other campus resources in our space, right? So Rocky's in our space 22 hours a week. Um, and then also we, we're we going to revamp our partnership with those of you on our work as well. So, so just we bring those resources to our space and, and we're kind of centrally located in the campus. So, so it's a great opportunity for all first year students to, to kind of uh, experience and get to know, get to stay connected with the community. Wow. And I love that we have all of you here today because not one of us is just one identity. And mm -hmm. so the partnerships that you guys each have and then the ways that we all can experience different aspects. And so I encourage all of you tuning in or those that you watch um, at a later date to really go check out all these spaces. Um, even if it's not a physical office space, um, get to know them because incredible resources to hear from all of you. Okay, so this might be a tough one because y'all all are very wise, uh, but what is the best piece of advice uh, that you have for students as they start their Vanderbilt experience? So, what would y'all say to that? I guess I can start. I'm just going down the line again. <laughs> poor, poor Rocky <laughs> sat closest to me. It was not the space to be I think, well, I think my advice would be, um, I think one of the things I noticed from Vanderbilt students is that they are um, highly engaged. You know what I mean? They're always seeking for the next opportunity, seeking for what their goals are. You know what I mean? I think one of the things that suggest or one piece of advice I would give is to hold things with an open hand you know what I mean I think allow your opportunities allow your experience to be maybe taken away from you you know what I mean I think when we hold things with a closed hand um, that grip will allow us to maybe crumble in some aspects you know what I mean and I think um, if we allow ourselves opportunities and give our space to experience new opportunities um, that, that that opportunity to kind of fall into a, a space where you're not really level um, can be dismissed. So I would say um, look at all the opportunities that are there to offer. Vanderbilt has a slew of opportunities for you. Um, and just kind of step out on a limb and see exactly like where you were going to be and what experience would be best for you. I think I would say everything in moderation. I mean, you know what I mean by that is from studying also introducing fun and play into life and into the work that you're doing. Um, I think that is needed and I think it brings a great balance. Um, so you can be just as studious as you can be as a person who's just enjoying your time in college. These are years that we never get back. Um, mm -hmm. And so I would say, yes, study and yeah. mm -hmm. have fun. And what I mean by have fun is don't binge on the weekend. Right? Like <laughs> study hard all week long, really hard, and the weekend comes, you go really hard. It's okay to find points in the week as well, just to to rest, mm -hmm. to play, and have fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great one. I think the main what I would say. I did my undergrad at Vanderbilt, and I I had like a real open mindedness when I came into school, and I was just so I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was just trying to soak everything up, and I would say like try to do that if you can. Come up with an open mind, an open heart. You know what I'm saying? Ability to like be open to new experiences and have a good time and just soak it all up as much as you can because there's so much going on here. There's so many people to meet. There's so many cool things to go do. Like go to the BCC cookout at the beginning of the year. You know what I'm saying? Stop by LGBTQI Live when they're having an intro beginning of the year thing. Just soak it up. Get interested. Get involved. Have a good time. Just just be open. Yeah. Absolutely. I love this advice even for me. <laughs> Stop taking notes. I yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess uh, mine's going to be a little bit of a mix of kind of what everyone's saying, but I was thinking immediately, like, listening. Do your listening tour. I think a lot of uh, first-year students, especially those that Vanderbilt attracts are ambitious, or they're successful already, they're going to want to lean into action bias. They're going to want to start a student org. They want to be editor-in-chief of da 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 in your first year. I'm just saying you have time. Yeah. Spend time listening, um, and I think that's an offshoot of being open. Um, and you don't have to give in to that action bias immediately. Take the pressure off. Uh, I agree with everything that everyone said. So, so, but I, I, the, the different direction that I'll go is more internal. Just uh, remember that you deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, remember mm -hmm. that Vanderbilt didn't make a mistake by mm -hmm. admitting you. Mm -hmm. You deserve to be here. Um, 
And I think that that's something you just have to carry with you. You have to carry that with you all four years. Um, because that, because there will be moments where you, there will be challenges that will make you that will. That there's going to be this pressure to forget that, mm-hmm. this pressure to to believe that you don't deserve to be here, you don't belong. Like that's, uh, I think that's a common experience uh, across the board. But but if you have that, just hold on to that internally of like, there was no mistake made. You deserve to be here. You were admitted. All of you, thank you. That was such good advice, even for me to hear. I'm with Steph. I was yeah. taking notes. That's awesome. Okay, so so college is often. I think some of you alluded to this. It's about meeting people from different backgrounds, different identities, who are just totally different lived experiences than your own. What advice do you have for how to take advantage of the incredible diversity the Vanderbilt has, the community has to offer? And then I, I didn't put this in here, but I'd love to hear also your thoughts on. What advice do you have for people who maybe have some marginalized community, marginalized identities, I would say, and how do they kind of find that place where they, they fit in, they belong, where they, they can also embrace their own diversity? Do y'all know what I mean? So both maybe for those who are experiencing new diversity and then those who kind of are like, I want to know that I have a place that I belong here. So um, Rocky doesn't have to go first. Does someone else <laughs> want to take the first swing or can you go right back to Rocky? <laughs> okay. um, I think one of the things specifically about my center that's um, incredible is that we house, like I said, um, different pluralistic communities, right? So specifically if you're a person of faith, I think one of the advice that I would say to get engaged in diversity is just coming over to the center, right? Mm-hmm. I think we, a lot of different people visit the center, a lot of people of different communities visit the center, um, but I would say take advantage of the student groups who are doing things, right? So we have MSA, the Muslim Student Association, we have um, Bandi Karma, which is the um, Hindu com- uh, student community. We have a new community that's, um, oh, well, not a new community, but it's re-emerging. It's called um, Voices of Praise, and that's basically like a worship and arts community, right? So I think with all these different opportunities to experience something new, you then get to see what other people's cultures are like. You get to experience um, what they like. I think one of the great things about all these experiences is that they're going to have customs that are particularly for them. Right? So you're going to be able to try new food, you're going to be able to go to new festivals, you're going to be, to be able to learn new people, learn about what they believe and what really gets them going. Um, and I think that's the importance of college, right? You get to meet new people, you get to engage in humanity in a different way, and you get to love on your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I asked you what's the last part of your question, if you can. Yeah, so I just, <laughs> no, you're so fine. So in addition to people wanting to experience more mm-hmm. diversity, just how, what would you recommend for those maybe of marginalized identities just to feel, you know, like they're not always the one that everyone's getting to know or feel like mm-hmm. So um, I, answering the first half of the question, I, what I would say is uh, there's no growth in comfort and no comfort in growth. And you will hear me say this all the time. And I think we have to uh, lean into the discomfort and partner with the discomfort of being around diversity and, being, and people who are different than us. Um, and when we speak of diversity as well, I think we look at the broader sense of it, that it's um, not simply rooted in, um, you know, anything like sex, gender, uh, religion, um, race, ethnicity, but it's also a lot of other things that we bring from educational level to um, political stance, things of that nature. Um, and leaning in, and it's okay. It's actually great to be uncomfortable, right? That's when we really, we, we shift most in our lives when we are uncomfortable. Right? And I think in, oftentimes it's shifting for the better. And so I say lean in with and partner with the discomfort and find your growth in that. Mm-hmm. I think for people who are institutionally marginalized, what I would say is um, be you and be authentically you, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. stand in yourself and who you are as a person. Um, and what I also say standing in that is that's also still remaining open to um, being open and, and being flexible enough to listen to others as well. But you don't have to take everything personally. But do you like mm-hmm. right and and you don't have to compromise and if you don't fit in you don't have to right, right. like you don't have to change yourself um because of others right so i think just be settled in you all good words all of them <laughs> no i was going to say something really similar to that and then speaking about what richard said earlier about like the you belong here like that that should be a mantra, you know what I'm saying, as you go along, but also, like, just try your best throughout your whole time at Vanderbilt to just be yourself. Mm-hmm. Try your absolute best to be your whole self the whole time, you know what I'm saying? It can be, I, I feel like here, it can be a little bit easy to try to try to be a certain way, you know what I'm saying, to succeed or to do whatever, fit this, fit that. Try your absolute best to stay true to who you are because authenticity also attracts authenticity, so that will allow you 
to be open and open yourself up to others who can also be themselves. So the more, I just don't that, that's my biggest thing. Try your best to just stay true to who you are because that is so enough. It belongs here. Everything you bring belongs here and it's here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So try your best to stay true to that. Absolutely. And remembering you were saying, you know, you belong here. That other student belongs here too. Exactly. So remembering that, you know. And you'll find, learn. actually, if you're yourself, the more you'll find those people who are also seeking that yeah. authentic experience, authentic friendship, authentic relationship. Like, it's going to come. Just be who you are. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to else to add to that. I, I know. It's, y'all are on the answer. Like, all, they yeah, say what you probably saying. were going to say. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I won't, I won't overcomplicate that. I think that, yeah, be your authentic self. We need you here. You know, mm-hmm. we need the diversity here. Um, and then in terms of, uh, what was the first part of the question? Just come to the centers, you know? Uh, we're all interconnected. If we can't help you, we'll find someone who can. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to do anything alone. Right. I love that. Especially if you don't belong in that identity group, still come to yeah. the center because you yeah. can still learn mm-hmm. and find a, a place there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, so the first part of your question. So, so uh, I did a, a master's degree in higher education, and one of my professors said something that always stood out to me about higher ed and and how people get through college. Um, it, my professor said the one, two, three rule, right? And so you want to have uh, three really good friends, peers, mm-hmm. of the same same level as you. You want to just find your your three really solid. That's not to say stop at three, but it, <laughs> it is to say that yeah. you're going to have those three that are just really, really solid. Um, that's what you want. And then you want two staff professionals. So this is folks like us, mm-hmm. folks that you see here, Folks that work in the centers, folks that work in other parts of campus, you want to have two staff that are always going to have your back, and then you want to have just that one faculty member mm-hmm. that is always that that you can that essentially almost becomes a mentor for you wow. throughout your college experience. Uh, if you do those things, number the the reason I bring that up to this question is because thinking about those things and doing those things will allow you to gain have all of these experiences with a lot yeah. of other people, right? If you if if me and Rocky are the two staff members on your favorite <laughs> team, then you're going to be exposed to all the centers, all the, right. the different diversity on campus. If you have those three solid friends and they're really good friends, they're going to help you mm-hmm. expo- be exposed and grow and develop over time. So so those type of things. Um, so I think that, that rule is something that always stood out to me and I always give that advice to, to students. Um, and then for those from marginalized uh, backgrounds, I would agree with what everyone else said of just being you and being your authentic self. Um, but on top of that, we have to recognize you you don't just hold one identity. So yeah. so there is still opportunity for you to grow and develop and under and be connected with a diverse group of people, right? Just because just because I'm black does not mean that 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 is where <laughs> like I, I am the diversity. No, <laughs> but it, it just it means that I, there are other groups of people that I can connect yeah. with that maybe aren't black. Like, Aren't in the black community, right? So, so thinking of it that way, there is still opportunity for you to learn and develop and grow and meet people who hold different identities. Such good answers. I hear so much wisdom. I love it. Okay, um, so we have two more questions. Um, what are some of the events or initiatives that your office or your group oversees throughout the school year that first year students may want to check out? So, what are some things kind of at the start of the year, kick it off right? Y'all would recommend they check out. Um, so for me. Um, in my office, in my center, um, one of the things I think you should get involved with is interfaith council, um, especially if you consider yourself somebody of faith. Um, it's when many different faiths, students, leaders of many different faiths come together and just have dialogue and conversation. Um, we have different events throughout the year that you can sign up for and come to, and we're welcoming of all people. Um, another opportunity initiative that we have is Narrative 4, and I would also say storytelling workshops. Um, so Narrative 4 is an opportunity to engage in a storytelling modality with somebody who does not look like you um, to have real in-depth conversation, you know what I mean? And I think in these, in these workshops and these modalities, we're able to learn something different, you know what I mean? I think one of the things that um, is interesting to me is that our lives are made up of stories, you know what I mean? Like we live and breathe based off of what we know and what we've experienced and very much so that is a narrative and that is a story. Um, and I think what this does, storytelling modalities and narrative for is gives you an opportunity to engage in somebody else's story in a meaningful way and, and when you're able to engage in somebody else's story in a meaningful way it then also gives you an opportunity to change your perspective on a thing you know what I mean and I think it allows you to build deeper connections with humanity and the people around you so um, please take advantage of the storytelling 
storytelling opportunities that we have. And the last thing that I would say is we have something called grief net, right? Um, when we come to college, we really don't think about um, tra traumatic moments that may happen. You know what I mean? I think um, for the four years that you're on campus, you may have a family member who passes away. You may um, have some really strained relationships with some friends that you made here. You may be failing a class and you really don't have anybody to talk to. You know what I mean? And you're going through it. What we offer is a group, a grief net group. Um, where you can come with other students to talk about what those experiences are. Um, depending on how the school year falls, um, we will have different types of group, group, grief net groups. Um, if somebody has passed, we can hold a group for that. Or if you're dealing with being away from home, we can hold a group for that. Um, but we are very much so in partnership with the Counseling Center, and grief net is something that we want to we offer to the Vanderbilt community, and we would really like you to take advantage of it because you just never know what you're going to experience while you're there, and we are here for you. So. Yeah, what incredible. I, I would say I think the largest one that we do is Diverse Stores Day, which happens in the beginning of the fall, and a lot of the people you see here in this room today participate, and so it's a way of seeing all of the um, offices on campus that do diversity, equity, inclusion, access, and justice work um, come together, and so we try to make it like a nice little carnival fair. There's some games, there's conversation that happens there, I would say that's one of the bigger ones. We are also going to be doing a safety campaign, so looking at all the offices, um, that make this a safe campus, right? And giving students the opportunity to meet those people that they probably would never really interact with, right? Um, and provide resources for them to know what to use and what's available on campus involving safety. Um, I think those would be two of the largest ones. And then again, I said all of the identity uh, initiatives also provide um, opportunities to make community. And so we will have the word that I'm looking for is coming to me, I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> meet and greets, right? So you can meet and greet people, faculty, staff, and other students who have those shared identities. And we also do the uh, first June celebration in November. Um, so those are some of the bigger events that come out of our office. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, Diverse Stores Day is huge. So be on the lookout for marketing for that because it's going to be super fun. It's like always a good time. But also for all of us, even if you can't stop by an office within your first semester, we're all at different fairs. You know what I'm saying? When you get on campus, you'll go to the student work fair, this fair, involvement fair, all that. A lot of us will probably be there. So be on the lookout for one of us or somebody from our offices if you're not able to make it to this space. Um, but for us, I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but we do offer three undergraduate internships, which again, we're opening to first years this year. So our Vandy Sex Ed internship is really awesome. It's a group of peer sex educators that basically are trained in like a comprehensive and inclusive sexuality education module. And then they go out and train the rest of campus um, with that. And so that's a really fun one. If you're interested in sex ed, definitely get involved in that. It's super fun. Um, the body project is also really, really great here on campus. We're kind of working, that internship is really working to shift the sort of problematic um, culture around body image that can be prevalent on college campuses um, and, and definitely comes up at Vanderbilt. So we're really, looking to kind of shift that narrative into one of body acceptance um, for all folks here on campus. So that's a really cool internship. And then the other one is our Women's Center Ambassadors Internship. Um, and they do sort of, sort of some of our like general feminism and equity um, programming here on campus. So they'll do trainings for classes, for Greek houses, for dorms, um, things like that. But that's a really fun way to get involved as well, especially if you're a first year student, come join us. We'd love for you to be one of our interns um, because we have a lot of awesome opportunities um, for y'all to get involved that way. So check it out. Incredible. Uh, so the Office of LGBTQI Life, we, a lot of our events are front-loaded in the beginning of the year, um, so which is great for me. <laughs> uh, but September is uh, our uh, International Celebrate Bisexuality Day, um, and so we're seeing, especially in the data at Vanderbilt, a lot of folks matriculating in, a larger and larger number are coming out as bi -pan fluid. Um, so we want to be able to celebrate um, those, those identities. Um, LGBT History Month is all throughout October, and so we're going to have events throughout that month. Uh, November is Trans Day of Remembrance, um, and then in spring we have Laughter Graduation, which is celebrating our grads, uh, but also just celebrating, you know, our, our accomplishments throughout the year, and so everyone, all community members are invited uh, to all of these events. Um, and then we just have a number of initiatives and events going on throughout the year, but I do want to plug, uh, we have a band book initiative that's coming out uh, in the fall. We're going to be partnering with the VCC, among other offices, because uh, we're seeing a lot of, you know, CRT books, LGBTUI books getting banned, um, especially with new legislation coming out, and so we want yeah. to get folks involved, be able to read it, uh, read these books, um, and just keep education open. Yeah. yeah, so the Black Welcome Center, um, at the end of the year, we'll do a Welcome Back Soul Food Lunch. Um, it's just an opportunity for just the community to come and, and get connected, um, eat, eat some good food, and get to know, meet and greet uh, people from all around campus. 
Um, so that's a, that's a that's a big thing that we'll do at the beginning of the year. Um, and for Black students, we also have the Harambe March. Uh, so we'll so it's an opportunity to just be introduced to campus. Uh, so Black students will march through through campus to the Black Cultural Center with all faculty and staff from all over campus cheering them on uh, and celebrating their, their, their arrival on campus. Um, so those are our two things at the beginning of the year. I think what I'll move, we have lots of great other stuff going on. I mean, yoga and all, lots of great initiatives that we have throughout the year. But I think the other thing I want to highlight that I think is more important is our student organizations. Mm -hmm. So we uh, advise the African Student Union, the Black Student Association, and the Caribbean Student Association. And those three orgs have large events that everyone can get involved in. Particularly, the African Student Union has the Harambe Showcase. Mm -hmm. So that will happen in February, but they'll start recruiting people to dance and act and sing and do any other type of arts, artsy thing. They'll start recruiting people in the fall. Um, and so that's a great opportunity, I would say, for for a lot of students. Uh, being in one of the cultural showcases is probably is probably like a must do mm -hmm. at many events um, because it's just they're just a, such amazing uh, events and fabulous performances. Um, the Black Student Association also has a big has a showcase, um, and the Caribbean Student Association has a showcase called Carnival mm -hmm. that happens in April. But they, again, they recruit people. All throughout the year to participate and to dance and sing and act and do all of those things. That's incredible. So many awesome events y'all will have to be on the lookout, which all of these have social media presence as well as rest colleges will be helping to promote the different events and initiatives. So we're really excited. Okay, last question. Um, how does your office or center help students connect with resources or organizations related to their identities in the broader national community? So let's say I want to you know, get connected outside of just now, uh, just Vanderbilt, excuse me. So, yeah, what um, resources or where could they find those yeah, different yeah, things? For sure, specifically for my community, specifically for my community, is um, we think, we hold community engagement, community partnership is really important, right? Um, wherever you find yourself in your faith and what you connect with, we have a community resource partner for you, right? So, um, we do a yearly resource fair, it's, it's kind of like a, church faith resource fair um, where you can come in. Um, we have churches of different denominations that you can connect with. Um, we have temples that you can go to. We have mosques that you can go to um, all in one space for you. Um, so these are the community partners that we've already built relationships with. Um, if, there, if, if you find yourself not really connected to these particular community partners, we have information of other community partners that you can go to. So whatever you're really looking for, we can find space for you and we can find resources for you. But um, we do have a list of community partners that you can connect with. For our identity initiatives, we actually have a website for each of them and um, that provides uh, information and resources about around campus and around town um, and, and the community. Um, so it will give you like individualized people to actually go to in different offices depending on what your identity is and what your those needs are. And we update it at the beginning of each um, semester. We have kind of a lot of folks who come to us looking for sexual health resources or reproductive health resources or gynecological resources that we don't house within our office, but we can definitely get folks connected to, whether that be through VUMC, through Student Health, or through somewhere like Planned Parenthood, which is just right down the street. Um, we have great relationship, relationships with all of those entities, so we're happy to connect folks with those resources if necessary, or if you need like a ride to one of those places or assisted, you know, transportation, things like that, we can definitely help with that as well. So. Um, yeah, we have great, great partnerships with those folks, so just let us know. Awesome. Yeah, our website uh, has a, a number of resources for like housing, uh, it's stuff in the wider community, uh, so go ahead and check out our website, it's uh, vanderbilt.edu forward slash LGBTQI. Uh, and then we're going to get a mobile app coming out soon, so and hopefully we can answer three prompts and that will direct you to any Vanderbilt resources, but also wider community resources. So if you need anything from like counseling to housing to, uh, you know, gender affirming care, uh, mm -hmm. those sort of resources. So Incredible. Yeah, so um, with the Black Cultural Center, so there's two things. Um, we have a, a monthly program that we do called our Racial and Social Justice Institute. Um, and so each month we will have a community partner that does social justice work um, that actually in our either in our space or mm -hmm. online via Zoom. Uh, and those are great opportunities to get connected. So last year we had the Black Lives Matter chapter of Nashville. We had the uh, 
the NOAA, which is the Affordable Housing Organization in Nashville. So those organizations, we, we, bring, we partner with those to bring those organizations to campus or, or connect you with them via Zoom. Um, and then the other thing is we are, uh, in the fall, you have the opportunity to get a book called The Black Pages, which will have all of the, all like as many black resources uh, as we can think of in the Nashville community. Wow. Uh, black owned businesses, uh, from restaurants to any other type of business you can think of. Um, we'll have black therapists in there and black, uh, uh, just, yeah, there's a multitude of things in the community uh, for black people, barbers, hair, hair things, all of that will be in there. Um, and that would be something that you either can stop by the BCC and get that book, or um, we'll put that in some of the kind of things that we give away at the beginning of the school year. At the, at the, like, the first four well, I just want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy day, like I said, to come and answer these questions. And of course, for any of you watching, as you get to campus this August, know that these spaces aren't going anywhere. So if there was a question we didn't answer, or maybe there's a resource, you're like, I really you know, need help with this, I mean, please come and stop any of them. I know that they would be more than happy to help. And, and just hear your story. We're excited for you to be a part of this. So um, until next week, thank you for tuning in. And again, thank you to our panelists. But this has been Emily Waddell with The More of You Know, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>